Hi Night5, another video. So this video is mainly going to be about the Atom and the models that were produced throughout the years of the Atom, what it's also made up of in terms of the very small particles that make up the Atom. Um, so yeah, it's all about the Atom today. And it was originally two Greek philosophers that were kind of credited with being um, the first to come up with the idea with the fact if we take something, a substance or anything, we break it down into as small as we can, um, that we will eventually get to something that we cannot break down to anything further. Okay. Um, and that was called uh, in kind of the Greek atoma, which means invisible, which we can see, which is very true. We can't see particles, we can't see atoms. Okay, they're very, very, very small. Okay, and that's where the word atom comes from. Okay, so they these guys were first to kind of um, envision that um, idea of the atom that is very small. We can't see it. Um, so, yeah. Then, in 1808, John Dalton and, um, suggested that the atoms, in particular in a gas, could be thought of tiny little elastic balls kind of bounce around all over the place. Now, we still use that um, model in a sense when we describe the what a solid, liquid and gas are made up of in terms of how the particles interact with each other. We still draw them as little kind of um, round balls, either it's in a solid or also very tightly together. They vibrate in a fixed position. Then a liquid, they got slightly move apart and they kind of roll over each other and move around each other. Then a gas, they're just little balls flying over the place. We still somewhat use that model to try and um, explain the um, how the particles are arranged in a solid liquid and gas. Okay, and then he suggested when we've made kind of compounds, um, we can bind together different combinations to make compounds. Um, I'll say from elements, okay? So it's a case of that was one kind of one of the earliest models um, of of the atom. But then J.J. Thompson came around in 1897 and discovered that atoms contained actually sm like even smaller particles within the atom, and these were known as electrons. Okay. Now this in particular model was is always known as, and I've always known it as, the plum pudding model. Okay, so you've got a big sphere of uh, the atom, okay, and within that is kind of a cloud. It's completely made of positive charge. The whole cloud is positively charged. Then within that, you've got these small, tiny le electrons, and within that, kind of the fruit of the plum pudding, okay? So it's a case of these tiny little electrons are negatively charged, and they are kind of all over the place within this, um, this sphere of um, positive... Um, charge okay so that was kind of the second model that came that came up from thompson then it was rutherford in 1911 the conducted experiment let him conclude that positive that most of the positive charge in an atom was concentrated in a very very tiny um space right at the center of the atom okay this is became as a nucleus okay so we sh should know um or kind of hopefully have maybe heard of the nucleus before um, and what it contains. And the fact that the electrons orbit this very small um, core of the atom in the middle. Okay, so now we're starting to see, now by kind of 1911, the um, what the um, atom is starting to look like. We're now starting to, re hopefully should start to recognize um, this kind of model. Okay. But it was Niels Bohr, in particular, a couple of years later, um, that suggested that electrons orbit the nucleus in very defined um, kind of levels um, or energy shells, which we'll call, which we'll talk about in another video. Okay, and it very much looks like our solar system in a sense because you've got the sun, which is in the middle, then you've got the, the closest planets okay or the electrons then you go a bit further out then you've got the next set of um kind of electrons in that kind of second precise level shell 
okay and then because you got more electrons then it's kind of um in the next um the next shell okay so it's very in a way kind of um analogy of almost our solar system and kind of how it's laid out okay so we're getting more and more um closer idea of what the atom actually looks like okay so the atom is kind of consists of very three small particles within that so we've got the proton the electron and the neutron okay so within that you've got the nucleus which contains the protons and the neutrons and then you've got the electrons which orbit around um the nucleus okay so just a little um table there to sum up the position the mass and the charges of all these particles so protons and neutrons like i said are in the nucleus okay now both these particles have a mass okay and the mass is one amu so it's um amu just stands for atomic mass unit okay and the charge the proton has a positive charge the neutron has no charge whatsoever then the electrons okay they orbit the nucleus like i was saying they have approximately zero now they do have a very very small mass but it's a case of it's that small we we just take it as zero okay and they have a negative charge okay so protons positive charge neutrons no charge or neutral and electrons have a negative charge or negative one charge okay okay so each element is fundamentally different from any other okay so it's a case of each element is um unique in a sense it's only made up of one type of atom okay so that's kind of almost the definition of an element okay we should know that from our bge days okay so we've got the elements are made up of one type of atom so for example gold is only made up of gold atoms okay so in 1913 okay same year as obviously um bohr with his um, model discovered that the number of protons and elements atom were always the same and that the number of protons for each element was unique okay so no two elements have the same atomic number okay so the number of protons is now then be called um in that time the atomic number okay so that's a really key kind of number to know in the sense of the number of protons equals the atomic number okay so if you've got the atomic number you know what the number of protons are okay so through experimentation um it was found that atoms have no overall charge okay they were neutral so have the all elements have um no charge whatsoever okay so the reason is the number of protons that you've got you have equal numbers of electrons so if you think about it um the number of protons say for example we had four which are positively charged now you've got four negative electrons there so four take away four is zero okay so the overall net charge for atoms when they're neutral are zero okay so have no charge whatsoever okay so when we talked about kind of um niels bohr's niels bohr even a uh, model of the atomic um of the atom sorry it's a case of he found that the kind of distinctive levels or shells that the electrons were kind of occupied in okay so there's a little bit of several rules that we need to know in terms of how many electrons we can fit in each energy level okay so the first shell which is closest to the nucleus which is spherical as well okay it's got a um, spherical shape um can hold a maximum of two electrons only okay and then the second and third shells are larger and can contain a maximum of eight electrons okay and they always got to be paired up as well okay so it's a case of um i'll move my video i've got a little diagram at the bottom here okay so see this is for example for potassium okay so this is k for potassium you've got two in the first energy level and you've got two four six eight in the next one and the third one two four six eight okay and then the final shell you've got that one 
Okay. So then and it's important as well that they are paired up um within that as well. Okay. What I might do actually is um just pop out my slide. Okay, so when we're drawing um electron configurations, so for example, oh my pen says to work. There we go, got my pen to work. Okay, so when we're drawing um, electron configurations, okay, so the, the ones in that five you really, really need to be concerned about are um, up to the first 20 elements, okay? So for example, if we drew lithium, okay? Now lithium's got three protons, okay? And three electrons, okay? So remember the first rule? Okay, draw a circle. Okay, first energy level has got two electrons. One, two. Okay, so that's two dealt with. Then we draw another one. Oh, my circle drawing game is not great in this drawing padlet. Okay, there we go. We got one. Okay, third electron is there. Okay. So we've only got three electrons, so it's okay, so we can't pair up any of these ones, okay? So if we kind of scroll down a bit, and for example, if we drew do, 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 um, oxygen, okay? Now, it's got two electrons. Okay, first one. Oh, no. Try that again. Oh, that's slightly a bit better. Okay. Okay, so see what I'm doing here? We're kind of pairing up the electrons. Okay, so we've got two there, two, four, then six there. So it's got mm -hmm. eight electrons in total. Okay, an easy way to keep yourself right with drawing the electrons in pairs is if we draw that again. Okay, so we go one, two, three, four, one, two. That's how I tend to draw electron um, configurations. Okay, so it's a case of um, oxygen, you've got two, four, six, seven, eight. So okay, so eight electrons or Eight protons, so therefore it's got eight electrons. Okay, so electron configuration is all about kind of showing where the electrons are. Okay, so that's just a quick kind of how we draw electrons in there. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, and there's a few examples there. Okay, so um, I'm gonna. Kind of stop the video there because there'll be probably another couple um, another video on the atom okay so mm. it's a case of um i'll continue on from where i left off after this video so thank you